The First Amendment protects citizens of the United States, stating that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. It means that you have the right to practice your religion. Without restrictions, without uh, being hindered by the government or by others. I have the right to believe what I am supposed to believe or what I feel called to believe. Which means that I can go here, here, or here and I can practice my religion. But can I practice it here? Religion is one of the most heavily debated topics of all time. In fact, it's seen throughout history as a major cause of war. And today, in governments both state and federal, it's still seen as a hot topic that's yet to be resolved. As a sophomore attending a public school, how does the school system protect my First Amendment right to freedom of religion in the classroom? Students have a right of, um, to engage in religious practices. That is something under our Constitution that they're allowed to do. And they're allowed to do it in schools under certain circumstances. They can pray before school. They can pray in between classes. They can pray at lunch. They can pray after school. What they can't do is actually pray um, during the time that the teacher is teaching. For teachers, there is really the limit that they are not supposed to spread their religion while they're at work. Um, it doesn't mean that they don't have a right to their belief, it doesn't mean that they don't have a right to their faith, but putting up religious insignia or speaking about their faith in terms of proselytizing to other people would not be appropriate because it can make students really uncomfortable. Over 300 religions coexist in the United States, yet over 70% of Americans identify is Christian. With such diversity, it can lead to conflicting opinions on the role of religion in public schools. Schools should not be a place that drive out faith and religion, but that should welcome faith and religion with wide open, beautiful arms. I don't want a person standing inside the building of a public school giving out Bibles. I don't want kids being proselytized in school to join another religion. I think prayer and religion is a private matter and it doesn't belong in a government school. Everybody, including atheists, live according to their faith. It's just what they decide to put their faith in. I think finding the balance between this is what the school system is, but this is where we allow religious voice to be heard so that there is an outside morality shaping how we do things together. There is a guard in that sense. Because of so many different perspectives, school board officials are confronted with challenging situations. And decisions have to be made on whether or not religion should be allowed in public schools, and if so, in what manner. When I was really young, uh, they started every school day in public schools with prayer, and usually a Christian prayer. And that got challenged, and then um, I remember when I was younger, they moved to a moment of silence meditation. But that was all a result of the fact that schools were being challenged across the country under the Establishment Clause about having somebody get up on the PA system and say a Christian prayer in school. There had been an issue where there was passive distribution of Bibles at school, so then the Satanist movement also wanted to have passive distribution of their work. If we allow religious materials to be given and distributed, that is considered an establishment of religion. If we only allow one religion to distribute their materials and not others. So that's why we said we either let them all in or we keep them all out. Last year I made like this joke where I was like, I'm going to run for best hair. Uh, and I did, and I won it. <laughs> when creating this documentary, I had the opportunity to talk to Winter Park High School senior Gina. In addition to being president of the ASL club, a part of the Thespian Honor Society, and a supporter of the other arts, Gina is of the Muslim faith. She shared with me what it's like when missing school for her faith's holidays, and how her teachers accommodate for her absence. In Ramadan, I'm fasting, right? And so I usually come, like, I'll come to school, but like, if it's at the end where the big celebration happens during the Eid, all I have to do really is just tell, talk to my teachers. But Gina has a simple request for the school system. 
like the freedom goes for anybody who wants to express themselves in whatever manner they want to. And what more can we do outside the school system, and rather as members of our own community, to carefully observe the separation of church and state? But we allow students to come in the mornings and pray around our flagpole um, in order to celebrate their religious practices. We should foster a culture in which people's private religious beliefs, including atheists and agnostics, are respected. That's freedom of conscience. That's what our Constitution guarantees. We, um, we have a non-discrimination policy. It says we don't discriminate against students on the basis of their religious practices. I'm consulted about how can we meet the needs of our Jewish children. When there is a holiday and the child isn't able to attend school, how can we be sensitive to allowing the child to make up the work or to not have a test on that day? I know through our student code of conduct, we gave a copy of the world calendar and we tried to document the very religious and important holidays for each of the major faiths that are within OCPS. Allowing the religion to exist in their world, but not be their world. If we're going to have a pluralistic society, there needs to be room for everybody at the table. Be real and, and, and be open and not be so quick to, to judge other people. And because I go to a public school that separates church and state, I don't have to leave this behind. I can believe what I want to believe and don't have to be influenced by the government or by others. Through the inaction of policies that prohibit discrimination against my faith and others, we can continue to enjoy and live out the precarious balance of freedom of religion in our public schools.